Hey, what's going on guys, Pizza Lake of here, and in today's video, I'm gonna take you to Premiere Pro and show you the basics that you should know if you're just starting out with this video editing software. So without wasting more time, let's jump straight to my laptop and let's get started. Of course, the first thing we have to do is to open Premiere Pro and after that, we're gonna go and click on new project. And from here, I'm gonna change the name of the project. I'm just gonna type down example number two and i'm gonna press ok so what you see right now is the workspace and my workspace is customized to my own taste so when you open adobe premiere pro for the first time it's gonna be a slightly different and sometimes this might be too overwhelming but don't worry about it because with the time you're gonna get more familiar with it and it's gonna get easier so once we have opened our workspace the next thing I'm going to do is go and create a sequence. And to do this, I'm going to go down to the left bottom corner and go to project example number two. From there, I'm going to click with the left button of the mouse. And from there, I'm going to go to new item and create sequence by clicking on sequence. From here, you can set up your own preferences for the sequence. I'm gonna go to setting, and from here, I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm just gonna move it back to custom, and from here, I'm gonna leave it to 25 frames per second, and with 1920 by 1080 resolution, which is full HD resolution. And I'll leave it as it is down here, and then I'm gonna press Okay, so once we have created the sequence, you're going to see that now we've got a timeline where we can import our files that we want to edit in Premiere Pro. So the next thing I'll do is go back to the project panel and from there I'm going to click with the right button and create a new bin. You can also do this by go and click on this icon there that it looks like a folder and from here I'm going to create new bin and I'm going to change the name of it. I'm going to change it to videos and press enter then i'm going to create another bin but this time i'm going to press with the right button of the mouse and click on new bin type down music and i'm going to create a third and the last folder which is going to be the b-rolls why i'm doing this like that because as i said when you import your files sometimes it can get messy and might take a lot of time while you're trying to find the right file in the project panel so that's why by creating those bins you will know exactly which video or which track it's in exact folder so once we have created these folders the next thing we're going to do is just click on twice on the music for example and go again click twice with the right button and from there i'm going to go to music and i'm going to import the music i would like to use for this project so for example it's going to be this one and then click on open done so this file now it's in the music folder and i'm gonna go backwards i'm gonna go to project panel again and now you can see that over there we've got the bin which it's named music so by clicking on it this is gonna take us straight to the track we would like to use for this example the next thing i'm gonna do is go back to the project panel and this time i'm gonna go to videos and import a video exactly as I imported the music. I'm gonna go to videos and let's say that I want to import some videos, but in our case, it's gonna be our main video. So I'm gonna import this one. And now we have imported a video as well. So I'm gonna go back to the project and you can see that now we've got bin videos and bin music. And again, you can click on it and this is gonna take you straight to the video that you, you would like to import into the timeline. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to import files into the timeline. So for example, I would like to import this video into the timeline. You have to just click on it, hold the mouse and grab it and drag it onto the timeline and drop it. And now you have a video onto this timeline. So once we've dropped the video onto the timeline, we're gonna do the same with the music. I'm gonna go to music. And I'm gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna click on it, drag it, and drop it onto the timeline. Now, when we have applied the music and the video on the timeline, they're super small. So if you want to zoom in or zoom out, you have two options to do it. The one option to do it is by clicking on the sequence or the timeline, and then press the plus. And like that, you can zoom in. And then if you want to zoom out, you can press the minus like that and the other way to do it is by holding these points over there onto this bar 
and drag it to the left. That's going to zoom it in. And by dragging it to the right, that's going to zoom it out. Let's say that you want to make this audio track bigger. So to do this, we can grab this point over there onto the right hand side and push it up. So like that, you can make the audio track bigger or like wider so you can see what's going on inside the track and where exactly you want to make a cut. You can do exactly the same with the video tracks by dragging this one up and then down to make it smaller. So now when you know how to import files, how to create a sequence, and how to zoom in and zoom out into the timeline. The next thing you need to learn is how to use the tools that will allow you to edit the video. So the first tool you're probably gonna need a lot is the razor. To access the razor, you can either press C or just go on this icon and press on it. And once you have selected the razor, you can go anywhere on the video you would like to cut and just press like that. Click on it and now you have cut the video just over there. Another tool that you're gonna use a lot is the selection tool. And to use that tool, you're either gonna press V or just go again and click onto the selection tool icon. From here, you can select this video and just move it further down into the timeline, or you just take the cut that we just made and place it above the first video like that. Another tool that you're probably gonna use a lot is the type two. So to select the type two, you're gonna either press T or just go and click on to the type two. And if you want to type something on your video, what you have to do is go to the screen and just click on it anywhere. And from here, you can type whatever you like. Just gonna type dancing. Then you have to press escape. Then you're gonna press V for the selection two and move the text, whatever you like around the screen, or you can make it bigger or smaller. And those are the three tools that you're gonna use a lot when you start with Premiere Pro. So now when you know how to do the cutting and how to move the videos around the timeline, the next thing you will need when you're editing videos is how to delete a certain part of the video. So to do that, you simply have to select the part that you want to delete and then you press the delete button. Or if you want to undo what you've done, you can press control and Z. So that automatically gonna undo the things that you've done on the timeline. The other way to delete a video is by going at the end of the video and you can see this red arrow pointing towards the left hand side. So you can just press on it. And when you see this red line at the edge, you're just gonna drag the video. And like that, you deleted the section that you would like to be out of the project. But now you can see that there is a gap. And to fix this, you can either click on the video and you can move it to the video you want to attach it to and straight away, you're gonna feel like something clicked. That means that you place a clip at the end of the first one. Sometimes you might have, let's say five or six little b-rolls or videos on the timeline and you have to select all of them and drag them this might take a lot of time but there is much easier way to do it and i'm going to show you in a second so again i'm going to press ctrl and z and again i'm going to click on the section i want to delete and this time i'm going to hold shift and press delete this will automatically shift the last video at the beginning of the first one. And this is gonna save you a lot of time when you edit your videos. The next thing I want to show you is how to use the effects. So we're gonna go down to the left-hand side and click on those arrows. And from here, we're gonna to go to effects. But if you don't have them anywhere on the timeline, you can go up to the window, click on it, and from here, you're gonna go down to effects and you can click on them and automatically they will emerge onto the workspace. So once you have the effects, you can go down to effects and click on them. And you can see that you've got all of those folders. You've got video transitions, you've got video effects, audio transition and audio effects. So let's say that you would like to use a video transition. So I'm gonna click on this folder and from here, I'm gonna go down to, let's say I want a wipe transition. I'm gonna go down to wipe and I'm gonna go to wipe over here. We're gonna click on it and then drag it into the middle of both videos that we want to place a transition like that. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And now you can see that I have applied the transition into the second video. So let's see how it looks like. 
And there we go. Now we've got this wipe transition that connect the first video with the second video. And like that, you can use all other transition for your videos or your audio tracks. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use the color panel. So I'm going to go and click on color. And from here, you're going to see all these things on the right hand side. But don't worry, as I said, it might be too complicated in the beginning, but with a lot of practicing, it's going to get easier. So, for example, I would like to change a little bit the brightness of this video. So to do this, I'm going to go to the right hand side where it say Lumetric Color. And from there, I'm going to go and click on Basic Correction. And from here, I'm going to go to Exposure and just going to drag it to the right hand side somewhere to 1.6. And as you can see, now the video is more brighter. When I untoggle this FX button, you can see what is the original video. And when I toggle it, that's the effects we have applied to the video. And from here, you can change the temperature, you can change the white balance, uh, the brightness of the video. Basically, you can change every color and you can change the look of the video with this feature. And now when we're done with the editing, the last thing that we have to do is to export the video. So to do this, I'm going to go up to Files. I'm going to click on it and from there, I'm going to go down to Export and I'll click to Media. When I click on it, it's going to open this window. And here on the left hand side, you can see the preview of the video you want to export. And on the right hand side, it's the settings that your video will be exported with. But you can change it to whatever settings you like for your video. In this case, I'm using H264, which is the most common video format for exporting videos. And from presets, you can choose the quality of the video. In this case, I'm going to export it to YouTube. 1080 full HD. Then if you want to change the name of the video, you can click on this where it says output name. And from here, you can change the name of your video. So you're going to type down example two, and I'm going to click on save. And like that, I changed the video and I save it to the folder I would like to be saved. Then if you go down from here, we, you can change the width and the height of the video and you can leave anything else as it is. And then the next thing you have to do is go to export and click on it. And that's how you export it in the videos. Sometimes it might take longer to export a video and that entirely depends on the length of the video. And of course, it depends of what kind of machine you're using. If it's more powerful, it will render quicker. And if it's less powerful, it will take more time. So that's the basic is you should know when you're starting out with Premiere Pro and don't worry if everything looks too complicated and too overwhelming. But with a lot of practice, believe me, every day is going to get easier and you're going to get better with video editing. And if you want to see more tutorials about Premiere Pro, you can check the videos at the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did so, please hit that like button and subscribe my channel for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.